Can I go now? There was once a YouTuber who was one of the most infamous personalities in the indie gaming scene. Now he's selling stolen hentai videos on OnlyFans for a monthly subscription fee. What if I told you this man currently has 150,000 subscribers on YouTube and that this number is projected to more than double within the next year? What if I told you he has openly stated on Twitter that black people do not deserve to matter to others? He was a man so infatuated with himself that he unironically created anime-style intro sequences to his YouTube channel. He was a man who made transphobic and homophobic remarks towards members of the speedrunning community. He was a man who dangled his YouTube influence above the heads of indie game developers, threatening to move on to other games if these developers did not submit to his every demand. This is the bizarre story of a man who let his success get to his own head. This is the story of Horhorista. Thronebutt is a community dedicated to maintaining leaderboards for the daily challenges of a game called Nuclear Throne. For those of you who don't know exactly how this works, Nuclear Throne is a roguelite game, meaning that levels, enemies, and other parts of the game are randomly generated in each playthrough. Daily challenges and weekly challenges offer players an opportunity to play through and compete against other players playing on the same randomly generated seed to see who can get the highest scores. Some users on the leaderboards masked their identities using what is known as an alternate account. They would create new Steam accounts and purchase the game additional times and then link these alternate accounts to the leaderboards. A significant issue with the use of alternate accounts, apart from that it was cheating, was that they stole away other people's rightful placements on the leaderboard. Imagine, for example, if the best player in the world had nine alternate accounts. That player could then potentially form the entire top ten of that leaderboard. But even more problematic than that is that it creates a huge annoyance for moderators. Moderators are necessary for these leaderboards to verify that the times being submitted are legitimate. Keep in mind that moderators have to verify scores every single day. Imagine that you are a moderator, and a player who has no history of submitting runs suddenly submits an extremely high score. You would be suspicious and spend extra time ensuring they weren't cheaters, right? Moderators had to spend significantly more time scrutinizing the validity of the runs from alternate accounts before accepting them. This created a huge burden on moderators to complete additional work, looking through videos frame by frame for evidence when they were only volunteers performing the activity for the fun of the greater community. Thus, Thronebutt moderators compromised and said, if you want to use alts, that's okay. Just please tell us the names of your alts so we don't have to waste so much of our time investigating. Horhoristo, in late 2015, was beginning to publish Nuclear Throne videos on YouTube and was developing a reputation as one of the top players within the Nuclear Throne community. 
and throughout late 2015 and early 2016, he held many world records for the game's different characters. He had quite a few of these world records. Poor Haristo, however, was one of those people who used alternate accounts to submit to the Thronebutt leaderboards. Poor Haristo's behavior of using alternate accounts culminated in a situation where, on August 20th, 2016, Thronebutt moderators were forced to take action against him. The site administrator, Darwin, spoke out about this in a Reddit post. Clarifying the situation and expressing frustration with Horhoristo's behavior. In this post, Darwin explains that several of Thronebutt's moderators expressed suspicion that Horhoristo was abusing alternate accounts. As a result, Darwin and the other moderators confronted him in a private Discord server chat. In these chat logs, the moderators question Horhoristo as to whether the alternate account Smug belonged to him. Horhoristo continually evaded questions or claimed innocence, saying the account did not belong to him. Darwin had finally had enough and decided to check the IP address of Smug's account and found that it was a perfect match with Horhoristo's. Yet, even after being confronted with that, Horhoristo still spoke mockingly towards the mods. At this point, Darwin had enough and decided to ban Horhoristo from the Discord server. Back to the Reddit post. In it, Darwin spoke respectfully about Horhoristo and his skill at the game. In this post, Darwin explains that they ultimately chose to remove only Horhoristo's alternate account, Smug. Horhoristo's main account was still allowed to continue submitting scores to Thronebutt as normal. Darwin stated, however, that while he initially believed Horhoristo to be innocent, despite what his moderators had claimed, he ultimately found Horhoristo's behavior to be absolutely appalling and that of a troll. One Finger is the name of Horhoristo's account on Reddit. Seeing the statement that Darwin just made, Horhoristo was unable to keep quiet. Horhoristo unleashed several replies to the thread, and, well, this was the result. Some of these posts, thankfully, were recoverable. In them, Horhoristo argues that he had actually been respectful toward the Thronebutt team, but that they had an agenda against him. Horhoristo claimed that he was, in fact, the victim of the situation, and that the moderators were just waiting for the first excuse to act against him. But were that the case, why did the team opt not to ban his main account, when they had every justification to do so? He was a cheater. He wasn't cooperating with them, and he was being extremely rude. If they had a vendetta, why were they being so fair to him? It just doesn't add up. Horhoristo, however, was not one to take his losses gracefully. He created a new thread, calling out Thronebutt moderators for unfairness. In it, he claimed they really did ban his main account, as he allegedly was unable to submit a score the next day. People were quick to point out that there was nothing in his profile indicating that his account was banned, as the website clearly indicates when users are banned. This was a fact Horhoristo had likely been aware of as a dedicated member of the community. The main crux of Horhoristo's argument against the Thronebutt team was that his choice to use alternate accounts was a response to their lack of moderation. But does this really make sense? If Horhoristo were upset about a lack of moderation, why was he, as another responder stated, throwing a tantrum after they punished him? In another post, Horhoristo argued 
that he broke the rules for the greater good, to spurn the moderators to action. Frognall, a Thromba moderator, fired back in response, arguing that there simply wasn't a problem with cheaters on the board, and that all the cheaters they were aware of had already been banned. Furthermore, Krognall accused Torharisto of being responsible for making several members leave the community. Torharisto's claim that he used an alternate account to force the moderators to do their jobs was a lie. Torharisto actually had a long history of using alternate accounts. Torharisto's encounter with the Thronba moderators happened in August 2016 but Discord users had been complaining about his alternate accounts since as early as March 2016. In fact, prior to anyone having known about Horhoristo's Reddit alias One Finger, users complained of The Finger Dude, whose Thronebutt account was linked to Horhoristo's Twitch. Another user states that they remember Horhoristo saying he buys multiple copies to play with alts. Even long before all of this, in October 2015, Horhoristo refers to making use of alternate accounts in a Steam post. This, however, was only the tip of the iceberg. Horhoristo's history with the Nuclear Throne community was tainted in other ways as well. Horhoristo was known for being extremely strange, vulgar, and egotistical. In an intro to one of his YouTube videos entitled Nuclear Throne Care Bears Mania, Horhoristo created an animation of a female character in the game getting forcibly dragged into a vehicle, and then injected with a syringe by a character symbolizing pedophilia and subsequently finding a razor blade on the ground, and using it to cut herself. Commenters on the video expressed confusion and bewilderment at the animation, with one commenter joking about the obvious implication, which was that the character had been raped. Horhoristo held numerous world records in the Nuclear Throne community, but when anyone else took the spotlight, Horhoristo immediately discredited their success. He would publicly call these runners out for being lucky, using a crutch, or for only being able to beat him because he was too busy doing other things to defend his records. The community grew fed up with his egotistical attitude and inability to celebrate anyone else's success, or at the very least accept their success as legitimate. If anyone else succeeded, it was because the developer ruined the game in the last patch, it was because of an exploit, or he would attack their consistency, claiming they could never get a run like that again. Horhoristo's poor attitude within the Nuclear Throne community ultimately led to a ban from the main Nuclear Throne Discord server. Horhoristo's numerous bans from the Nuclear Throne communities discouraged him from continuing to play the game, so he set his sights on newer games which would result in more exposure for his channel. 
Horroristo jumped from game to game, attempting to be the first to post content from each game, and then rapidly moving on to the next. Horroristo focused on indie titles, and saw success with games such as The Binding of Isaac, Downwell, Enter the Gungeon, Turbo Pug, and Hollow Knight. For Hollow Knight, Horroristo performed a speedrun, challenge run, hybrid, he called Balls of Steel Soul. It was the first popular YouTube speedrun of the game, earning itself over 300,000 views. Speedrunners at the time didn't think very much of it, until someone within the Hollow Knight speedrunning community noticed what lied within the video description. In it, Horhoristo makes some interesting comments regarding speedrunners. Horhoristo, likely jealous by the increasing popularity of actual speedrunners, stated, I always perceived speedrunning as a mindless, automated task, left for those who aren't generally talented, but want to leave a mark with some hard work and perseverance. After the community took notice of these comments, people began discussing Horhoristo. Members of the Nuclear Throne community, naturally, were amongst the first to speak up. Others shared more of his disparaging remarks against speedrunners and his general poor attitude. As we learn that Horhoristo was an unpleasant person, a speedrunner by the name of Fireborn researched the rules to the Balls of Steel Soul run, and sought a better time for himself. Fireborn at this point had already completed a full game hitless run of Hollow Knight, so it only took just over an hour to steal the coveted Balls of Steel Soul world record. As one would expect, Horhristo quickly argued that this run was illegitimate and did not beat his world record. Horhristo argued that healing at Watcher Nights meant the runner had no balls, evidently unaware that the runner he spoke of had completed the entire game hitless. Speedrunners pointed out the flaws in this argument, as Horhristo broke his own rules numerous times throughout the run. Horhristo faced with this contradiction claimed that Fireborn had played over 1400 hours of the game to his 76. This was undoubtedly fabricated by Horhoristo, as I am Fireborn, and I had significantly less than 1000 hours of playtime at that point. Speedrunners quickly realized they were talking to a brick wall, and instead opted to write copypastas and jokes, making light of the situation. Some of these were eventually posted to Horhoristo's channel. He did not take the mockery well. In a response, Horhoristo called the speedrunning community a bunch of sensitive faggots. Horhoristo furthermore made statements saying, Rest in peace, all the nameless trans, I mean speedrunners, that nobody gives a shit about and the amount of publicity that was generated for my name via the trans community is more than I could have asked for. Now, I do hope, as a member of the speedrunning community myself, that everyone understands being a trans-inclusive community is a source of pride for speedrunners. Using this as an attempt to disparage us is laughable. However, that does not excuse the fact that such comments were transphobic and unacceptable to make. At some point, Horhoristo's egotistical, narcissistic attitude developed into a philosophy. This was centered around the idea of natural talent. Natural talent, in Horhoristo's mind, is represented only in a person's first encounters with a particular challenge. In other words, natural talent is only visible in the kind of content which he creates. As soon as a person practices to get better, it becomes an activity utterly devoid of meaning, as any person can practice to become better at something but only a person such as Horhoristo with natural talent can succeed on their first attempt. 
You only get one chance to prove how good you are at a game naturally, without grinding. Thus, because you must practice to get good at a speedrun, speedrunning is inherently unimpressive. Porphyristo took this to an extreme by creating alternate Steam accounts, repurchasing games he wanted to continue playing after initially completing all the achievements, all so that his time played for each game would remain at a lower value. I'm not going to spend any time addressing that argument. I will, however, address the fact that Horhoristo performs more speedruns than the vast majority of self-identified speedrunners. When searching his YouTube video uploads, Horhoristo has 151 videos containing the word speedrun in the title. Horhoristo loves publishing casual speedrunning content. Many challenge runners are because challenge running and speedrunning are quite similar in practice. The largest difference is that challenge running tends to involve short-term grinding, whereas speedrunning tends to involve long-term grinding. This means that when speedrunning content gets published, it tends to overshadow challenge running content which was published shortly after the game was released. This is why Horhoristo performs such mind-bending mental gymnastics to justify his distaste for speedrunning. I'm coming, I'm coming, wait! Following Horhoristo's encounters with the Hollow Knight community, his YouTube career began to go down a different path. In the middle of 2018, Horhoristo published a gameplay video of Hakoniwa Explorer Plus, a hentai game. This video, entitled I Came With Zero Expectations, earned nearly a million views. The video contained suggestive content, minor nudity, and sexualized battle sequences, which I'm not going to show in the video. A few months later, in September 2018, Horhoristo released more hentai content in a video entitled A School Full of Waifus. In October, an Aero Eco All Bosses video, and in December, two Deep Space Waifu videos. Now, something you'll notice about some of these videos is that they are only a few seconds in length. That is because they were manually cut down to that length by Horhoristo after being published, for reasons we'll get to later. Horhoristo removed a large portion of his hentai game content leaving the more popular videos and either removing or migrating everything else to an alternate account. In 2020, Horhoristo began to publish much more videos which were either of hentai games or sexualized in the title or thumbnail. Of the videos which Horhoristo didn't delete, there were five sexualized titles in 2019. In 2020 so far, there have been 58. This represents an intentional shift in his marketing, targeting a less mature audience that is amused by that kind of thing. In browsing through a few of these, I found one video, published on June 28, 2020, which actually contained nudity throughout the entirety of the video. This video was entitled, Click Here to Get Disappointed. The main character sprite is completely nude throughout the entirety of the video, with visible nipples. Commenters on the video express surprise at the character's nudity, and the fact that the video was entirely uncensored, saying the video will surely get taken down quickly. Five months later, the video remains untouched by YouTube. At this point, any reasonable person would have expected Horhoristo's YouTube account to get taken down. In fact, I personally reported his videos at the beginning of the year, 
and was surprised when he was still pumping out videos as if nothing happened. While he was not banned, Horhoristo's account was, in March 2020, demonetized. Thus, Horhoristo would no longer be able to run advertisements on his own videos, and could no longer make money directly from YouTube. Horhoristo claimed that the demonetization was due to him making an appeal regarding a strike he received for a Nuclear Throne video containing violent content. This appeal was rejected. Horhoristo claims this was unfair of them, but knowing that he has so much indecent content still published on his channel to this day, I would wager that whatever it was that he got demonetized for was likely quite obscene. However, if this content was awful enough that he was demonetized for it, it raises the question, why didn't YouTube investigate his channel further? Why wasn't he banned? To offset the losses from Corhoristo's demonetization, he immediately created a Patreon account. This Patreon account was created and advertised on March 25th, 2020, before he even made an appeal about his demonetization to the YouTube Twitter team. In a video made to promote his Patreon account, Horhoristo appears downtrodden, fiddling sadly with his fingers whilst mumbling in apparent sadness. Now, what I'm uh, trying to say is that monetization is more than just earning, uh, earning money for me, because if I can't uh, provide for me and my family, and I have like, two kids, a wife, and if I can't provide to them, then that means that I have to resort to other sources. Such as working a job. Horhoristo claims that he requires this Patreon money from his supporters to be able to continue providing for his family, while also providing content to his fans. As can be seen from these graphs, showing the continued success of Horhoristo's Patreon, it had an average of $7.61 per patron in July, and has 81 patrons currently. In a YouTube community post, Horhoristo thanks his patrons, claiming that without this Patreon, his YouTube channel would be dead. However, something Horhoristo intentionally left out of these Patreon videos was that he was, in fact, still earning revenue from his YouTube videos. Horhoristo did this by abusing an exploit in YouTube's content ID system. Horhoristo used a company called CD Baby to perform this exploit. This company is essentially a middleman between musicians and YouTube's content ID system. Musicians submit their music to CD Baby, and then CD Baby tells the content ID system to search for that music. Any videos which use that music will be flagged by the system, and revenue from those videos will be redirected to the person who owns the rights to that music. Horhoristo submitted his outro music to flag his own videos as belonging to a third-party musician, which was himself. Thus, Horhoristo was still able to continue collecting ad revenue from his videos despite being demonetized. And as you know, Horhoristo was simultaneously collecting money from Patreon supporters who were mostly unaware of this content ID exploit. In fact, despite the supposed setback of demonetization, Horhoristo claimed in early November that he was doing better than ever before. His Patreon supporters are still, to this day, sending him money. At this point, you might be thinking, Horhoristo is some kind of evil genius. But actually, that's not the case at all. In September 2020, Horhoristo raised complaints with CD Baby, as the content ID system had failed to detect some of his own videos. However, this was something that CD Baby could have never solved, because the problem was the system on YouTube's end. When CD Baby looked into the situation to solve it, and saw what Horhoristo was doing, they told him, in his words, to go eat shit. Still, he continues to collect ad revenue on all the videos which he claimed prior to this. 
Horhoristo states in his YouTube video descriptions that since YouTube stopped all income to the channel, you can feel free to support me and keep the channel going. This is extremely dishonest, as to this day he still receives income from his channel. Through the sexualization of his content, Horhoristo saw a golden opportunity. Since he no longer had to worry about the demonetization of his channel and had his Patreon to fall back on, Horhoristo decided to finally take the plunge by starting an OnlyFans account. Now, monetizing images and videos of your own body is perfectly acceptable. Monetizing hentai scenes from video games, which you had no permission to sell, that is a bit more questionable. For the low, low price of $9.99 Canadian a month, you could be granted access to the curated collection of Horhoristo's finest scenes from hentai games, along with some hentai movies too, because why not? When I saw this, the first thing I did was contact as many of the English-speaking developers and publishers of these games as I could. Most of them responded quite quickly, and absolutely none were aware that Horhoristo was selling their content. Denposoft, a publisher of these games, filed a DMCA request. The developer of Monster Girl Project said they might deal with it later. The developer of AeroEco said they were not too concerned about scummy small fry doing things like this, but that they would pass the message along. The publisher of many of these games, Critical Bliss, asked for screenshots, thanked me, and then told me they would look into it. Now, Horhoristo's OnlyFans shop is only successful because he is able to direct so much traffic to it through his YouTube accounts. His scheme works as follows. Horhoristo on his main YouTube account posts censored versions of hentai game content, and then in the description provides a link to his OnlyFans, where users can get the full uncensored version. In some videos, Horhoristo even censored nudity with images of the OnlyFans logo. In most of the videos, Horhoristo uses an intro containing large red arrows directing users to click the OnlyFans link in the description below. For content which Horhoristo deemed too risky to upload to his main account, he even created an alternate account called Cultured Gaming. This account is much more strictly focused on marketing his OnlyFans page, and some of the content which Horhoristo initially uploaded to his main was moved to Cultured Gaming after the next incident we will talk about. Cultured Gaming shamelessly features full, uncensored nudity within its videos. Horhoristo's OnlyFans page was a far greater success than one might expect. A week after the page's release, based upon revenue earned, it was within the top 16% of creators on OnlyFans. A few weeks later, the top 7%. And one week after that, within the top 6%. Horhoristo's scheme has resulted in continued monetary success. On September 20th, 2020, however, Horhoristo would wake up to seeing that his YouTube account had been hijacked. Users reported that Horhoristo's account was being used to stream something related to Bitcoin. Horhoristo's channel name had also been changed to Polkadot. Horhoristo pleaded with YouTube on Twitter to deal with the issue quickly. Initially, YouTube told Horhoristo that it could be a process that would take weeks. By September 22, 2020, however, in only two days, Horhoristo's account was successfully reinstated to him, and all changes made to his account were reversed. On September 27, 2020, Horhoristo tweets out his appreciation for an employee of YouTube named Richard, who was evidently one of the people Horhoristo had worked with to reinstate his account so quickly. 
On September 28, 2020, it happened again. Porporisto alleges that the hackers bypassed all of the security process somehow. Porporisto notes that he still has access to the same contact as before, presumably referring to the man named Richard. Similar to last time, Porporisto's account was quickly reinstated without any issue by October 3rd. Apart from the road bumps of having his account hijacked, Porporisto was doing quite well for himself by October. He was continuing to earn ad revenue from his videos through content ID claims. He had a Patreon with nearly 100 patrons donating an average of $7 monthly, and his very own OnlyFans subscription service. What could possibly go wrong with this picture? Well, on November 5th, 2020, Porhoristo's account was completely banned by YouTube. Porhoristo claimed that this was due to a thumbnail he uploaded being automatically rejected, as he alleges that immediately after this occurred, he was banned. Porhoristo actually has admitted to, in the past, testing the limits of YouTube's automated thumbnail censorship system. This fact, combined with how questionable many of his current video thumbnails are, makes it unsurprising that YouTube would ban him on these grounds. YouTube saw Horhuristo's tweet and acknowledged it on the same day. YouTube wrote that they had sent him an email, explaining the reason for the ban, and invited him to make an appeal. By November 7th, Horhuristo says YouTube is processing his appeal and by November 8th, YouTube denied his appeal. Once again, Porhoristo brought the matter to Twitter, arguing that his content was not meant to arouse the viewer. YouTube's Twitter team asked for additional context to pass along, to which Porhoristo responded that he never received any warnings. In the same day, YouTube's Twitter team confirmed that Horhoristo's account violated community guidelines and would remain banned. Horhoristo, however, found a glimmer of hope through his contact, again presumably Richard with YouTube's hijack team. Horhoristo actually initially contacted him directly on November 5th, the same day he was banned. This person responded to him on the next day, claiming to have escalated the issue. On November 8th, the same day that YouTube confirmed Horhoristo would remain banned, his contact sent him this. Horhoristo was elated. His contact with the hijack team mistakenly thought that Horhoristo's account was currently banned as the result of a hacker, when in fact, it was Horhoristo who got his own account banned. Horhoristo immediately posted this to his Discord, claiming that he hoped he could spin this into something, because he definitely wasn't hijacked. Horhoristo played along with this contact of his, and told members of his Discord that he would start deleting the evidence that his account was banned due to the automated thumbnail censorship system. The hijack team sent Horhoristo this message next, and by November 10th, his contact had fully unbanned and recovered Horhoristo's account. Following this, Horhoristo began censoring parts of his channel. This is why many of his videos have been cut down to being only seconds in length. Many but not all of his lewd thumbnails were similarly removed. Before he was unbanned, Horhoristo claimed that if he ever regained access to his channel, he would be 100% done with erotic games. And all of that would be moved to his new channel, Culture Gaming. Here is an image showing his most recently published videos. As for reality, he still is, and always will be, Nothing more than a whore. There we go. 
No more bullshit, please. In the future, Horhoristo hopes that he will be able to continue to abuse his contact at YouTube's hijack team as a get out of jail free card. As a long term solution to his demonetization, he is also seeking a partnership with a multi channel network or MCN. MCNs are groups such as Machinima, for example. MCNs split revenue with the content creator but also offer them an additional layer of defense, as well as connections inside of YouTube should Horhoristo ever be demonetized again. Horhoristo hopes to continue to look for more ways to expand his channel. There are many reasons why it is important that Horhoristo's account should be re-banned. Horhoristo exploits his community through Patreon by misleading people into believing that he has not been receiving any money from YouTube. He exploits game developers by stealing and reselling their content without permission. Horhoristo exploits his YouTube contact by misleading them and convincing them to unban him despite his official appeal being denied. Horhoristo increasingly sexualizes content which significant amounts of underaged youths consume, and directs them to purchase the uncensored versions for a monthly fee. Horhoristo is vehemently hated by every community he interacts with, because he acts like a whiny, racist, transphobic, homophobic, narcissistic asshole who is incapable of celebrating anyone else's hard work and achievements. Fuck Horhoristo.